You know, governments pay for hospitals, government pay for roads, government pay for military. Why should government not subsidize drugs? What's the difference? They may cover some drugs for poor people, but they don't make the drugs cheaper. The nation sits down with Professor Aaron J. Chichanova, Nobel laureate in medicine, to discuss personalized medicine and what he calls a novel language of peace. So you'll be in several places to give lecture uh, through the... We were one. We were already in Nagoya in Japan. Right. And tomorrow we are going to Hatiai to Songkla University. So this is for this trip. Okay, it's a part of uh, Japan ASEAN Bridges. It's part of the Bridges uh, program that brings Nobel laureates along a period of about half a year to Thailand and to another country. So Thailand has always been like the center and another country. This time it's Japan. It depends. I was with them in Laos, I was in Cambodia, I was in the Philippines, I was in North Korea, now in Japan. So it's Asia. One of the topics that you prepare to talk about, uh, it's about personalized medicine. Now, when we hear the word personalized in any kind of thing, first thought will come to mind will be like, is it expensive? Is this the same thing that we would think of when it's come to medicine? Yeah, it, initially it will be expensive because you know, we are tailoring uh, medicine for, for people, not for all the bi 8 billion people in the, in the planet, but uh, if until now for, let's say, breast cancer or prostate cancer, there was only one drug, now by understanding the mechanism, there will be 20 different or 10 different breast cancers. So each will need its own drug. So if now one drug was sold for $1 million, now there will be 10 drugs that will be sold for $100,000 each. Right? Because the market will be sliced, but the drugs have to be developed and it costs money. So who will take the money? The companies want the money. So initially it will be more expensive, hopefully at the end, a long time it will go down. But even now medicine, with all due respect, is not equal for everybody. Right. It's not equal for everybody. Rich people have more medicine and better medicine than poor people in Thailand, in Israel, everywhere. And in Africa, many people don't have medicine at all. So, you know, your children have better education if you have money, and other children have less education because people don't have money. It's true for food, it's true for education, it's true for giving children piano lessons, it's true for traveling the world. Some people can afford to travel the world, some cannot, and that's life. But medicine is different because yes. medicine is health. And I think that with health, we should be more careful than with traveling the world and uh, so on. But um, Do you think personalized medicine will have a possibility to be more affordable for more people? At the end, I hope that yes. But at the beginning, it will be more expensive. And if it's more expensive, it's less affordable. Let's go together, isn't it? Yeah. So w what do you think would be a mechanism that make it I mean, does it, does it need government help or some kind of policy? First of all, it will become routine. So whatever comes routine becomes uh, cheaper, right? If it's a routine, that's the routine. Drugs will go out of license, so they will be cheaper, you know, because every drug is protected by a license for certain years in order to ensure the earnings that the, the manufacturer will cover the expenses. So drugs will go out of license, so that will make it cheaper. And maybe the government also will interfere uh, to make it uh, more accessible. So we're talking about a model of um, medicine production. We are talking about medicine production, about the expenses that are uh, there, about whether governments intervene or not intervene. We are talking about time. It's, it's multifactorial. Do you, how much do you have to involve governments in this? I think that a lot. Okay. I think that a lot. Not only this, in general, you know, governments pay for hospitals, right. government pay for roads, government pay for military. Why should government not subsidize drugs? What's the difference? Drugs is part of health. If they build a hospital and pay the salary of the doctor, 
why shouldn't they pay also for part of the drugs? They do, but not all kinds, right? I mean, they have their ways of being selective. Yeah, but they don't tell the companies how much to charge. Right. So they don't incentivize the companies maybe to participate and to absorb part of the expenses. So it's about policy, about how to... They may cover some drugs for poor people, but they don't make the drugs cheaper. If they make the drug cheaper and also cover it for poor people, they also save themselves some money. In a way, yes, yeah. You would think it would be that simple, but in reality, they never make it. You know, I don't know how it's going to look like, but it's clear that the technology is going to be more expensive. This is clear. Right. And by being more expensive, at least for the next years, it means that it will be less accessible. Mm -hmm. So less people will enjoy it. In order to make more people enjoy it, the government have to walk in. Right. It's one mechanism. Another topic that you prepare to talk, it's about the um, science and technology as the, you call it language, novel language for peace. Why, why is that a specific way? Because of I'm not a government, I'm a scientist. So at the level of the scientist, when I'm developing a drug, I don't care who takes it. Right. I want that everybody will take it. So in that sense, it's for peace, isn't it? It's like even my enemies, you know, the Arabs that hate us. You know, our drugs, it's amazing, are being used in Iran. <laughs> well, but I think that all in all, the purpose of science doesn't matter whether it's to desalinate water, to make better tomatoes that will grow in arid areas, to make genetically uh, better plants, to develop drugs and devices. I think that all in all, Scientists want to benefit and to improve the quality of life of people. That's, and that's a very peaceful target. Um, so weeks ago, we had a chance to talk to Professor Kachita, and he was talking about uh, science. Sci the way scientists work together can be a model for peace-building process. I believe it's so. He is right. Because part of science is collaboration. Mm. If I have p part of the knowledge and some Thai scientists have part of the knowledge, and if we put the knowledge together and we make better knowledge or bigger knowledge, why not? Collaboration is very important. But then, the, um, what's it called? The, the disagreement in some politics or some kind of thing shouldn't be in between the scientists work together, right? In reality. Unfortunately, Concept. unfortunately, politics is prohibitive on science, yes. So if you take, for example, the current relationship between China and America, very bad relationship, of course, scientists cannot work together under this because these governments say, no, you cannot collaborate, you cannot do this, you cannot do this. I cannot collaborate with Iranian, for example, because it's an enemy country. I cannot go there. I cannot even land there, you know, with an airplane. I cannot go there. It's a loss of opportunity. Because there is no diplomatic relationship. So by that way, you can argue that uh, politics is interfering with science. How do you see things? Making peace. If you make peace, then you solve the problem. But it seems, seems like big guys from most of the countries that... I'm not a big guy. I can only dream. <laughs> I can only dream. Okay, come back to personalized uh, medicine. Is that one of the projects you're working on right now? We are not working on it. You know, you cannot, personalized medicine is like you're working on, on the space. Right. It's big. We are developing one drug right. in the lab, in our laboratory. And side by side, we are developing criteria to which patient it will fit. Mm -hmm. So that's personalized. We are, so on one hand, we develop the drug. On the other hand, we are developing criteria, biomarkers, that will say if you give the drug to this patient, it will be OK. But if you give the drug to another patient, it will not be OK. So that's personalized medicine. So yes, we are involved in it on the drug that we are developing. We want to know to which patient it will help and to which patient it will not help. Because why to give a drug to somebody that it will not help him? So uh, uh, alongside developing a certain drug, you're also developing, um, what's it criteria. called, protocol. Protocol of... It's protocol or criteria. Mm. Criteria, we call it. Criterions that say that this patient is going to benefit from the drug, this patient is going to less benefit, and this patient is not going to benefit at all. So that's personalized. 
Do these things have to be like copyright, like like all those other? Well, there is patent on everything. Nobody can steal it unless they want to steal. You know, we are working according. We are working in the international community. We are not working in the jungle. So hopefully it's protected. Yeah, it's in. It's called intellectual property, and it belongs to me. It's like I will take your nice uh, tie bracelet away from your hand by force. You cannot do it. It's a crime. Stealing knowledge is a crime. But uh, how 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 is that work in the modern modern day and age, though? Well, there is an international law. No serious company. Let's say that. Um, a Thai company will want to develop it. They will have to look at the patents and they will see that this is protected by me. So they can license it from me. I can give them a license for money, but they cannot do it on their own. They will not do it. If they are, if they are on their own minds, they will not do it. They will look at all the patents and they'll see that this is protected. Well, the protection is only for a certain time in order to enable you to develop it and to make some money and then it phases out, exactly like we talked before. But if it's a serious company, they will not start to put a penny into something that doesn't belong to them. It's like stealing. It's mm. stealing. You don't steal. Right. So it, it's, a, it's common that well-established company would just do the yeah. right way. If another company will do it, I will go to a court in Thailand and sue them. And the court will immediately tell them, stop doing it. And we fine you already for the damage that you caused. But that's how this international community works. So but it's true for everything. So it's true for everything. <laughs> Not for, for, for everything it's true. You don't steal. Right. So I guess medicine is one of not that many things that the people serious in business would just make sure that it's uh, being done correct way. Right. Because of all those patents and copyright. Right. Therefore you write patents. And the patents are aimed to protect you. So um, come back to this. Why do you call it novel language for peace? Why language of peace? We already talked, right? Yeah, why, not, why novel? Right. Because people don't identify it as a language. People think that science is science. You know, these crazy people work in the laboratories and, you know, what they do and, and so on. I think that it's novel because it's a new idea that science in collaboration and talking to one another, you say, it doesn't matter if I go today to a hospital in Bangkok, or in Phuket, or in Kosumoy, or in Lao, in, in Pyongyang, in North Korea, and I talk to the doctor, we can understand one another. We talk the same language, because sick people are sick people. So we talk the same language, so we have an opportunity to collaborate. Therefore, we have an opportunity to, because we aim good, that's peace. Aiming good means peace, isn't it? We don't, I, don't, I cannot make peace between I'm not a prime minister and I'm not a foreign minister, so I cannot make peace between countries. But my profession, its nature, is a nature of peace. Mm. And it's novel because until now people didn't identify it as such. Mm. People didn't think about science and peace as one. Yeah, they don't put it together. They didn't put it together, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what I was talking to Professor Kajita too. Usually you don't put science and exactly. peace process exactly. together. Exactly. But it's actually, it's involved a lot of common understanding and yeah, we are talking the same language, all the scientists, so I think that we are an example to the fact that we can, that we can collaborate and talk. Uh, but I will talk to, you know, scientists are talking to one another all over the world. The organizer of this, uh, you know, he brings Nobel laureates from Sweden, from America, from Israel, from France, from, from UK, from wherever, and they all find common language wherever they go. You can go to Laos, I was in Laos. I talked to scientists. I was in Cambodia. I talked to scientists. I was in Thailand, of course. Last question, though. Uh, how much AI do you use? Do you think it's beneficial? Do you think it's helpful? Oh, a lot. We are using it a lot. OK. It's very beneficial, but we have to be careful. We need to regulate it so it will not harm us. We use it a lot. In um, doing research and... In research, yeah. in analyzing samples, in data analysis, we use it a lot. But it's, it's very useful, it's very useful. It's a technology, you know, it's like any other technology, like electric car. Do you use electric cars in Thailand? You do, right? Yeah, we have a lot. Oh, you have a lot, we too. Why? It's a new technology, and 10 years ago there were no electric cars, right? So it's technology. It's a very useful technology, but we have to regulate it. That's all. We use it a lot, and it's very beneficial. 
regulated will be a bit difficult, isn't it, for government? It will be difficult, but it, it's a must. Otherwise, people will, you know, people will abuse it. It's like we regulate nuclear energy, we regulate a lot of things. We regulate carbon dioxide, you know, greenhouse gases, we regulate a lot of things internationally. We regulate patents, we talked about patents. We should regulate AI. So it's, uh, it's, it's something useful in scientific community? No doubt. No doubt. Just need to be watched and careful using it. You can use it anywhere you want. How about your personal... Um... We are using it in analysis of pathological samples in the hospital, you know, sections of biopsies of tissues. Everybody uses it for something else. But I think that, in principle, whatever is made, made by men, or women, doesn't matter, it's, <laughs> it's inferior. We made it, right. but it cannot replace me. It yeah. cannot replace me. It's neither human touch at the end. It, it doesn't have the human touch in it. It's, it's mechanistic. It's, an, it's, a, it's a technology, like any other technology. It's a tool. It's a tool, exactly. That's the word. It's a tool. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And hope you have fantastic time for the rest of your stay in Hat Yai, sure right? Okay. I'm sure we will have. Will you go to uh, some beach town as well after this? Oh, we are going to do some shopping, and tomorrow we are flying to Hat Yai and then back home. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for your time.